Melanie and the Library. Written and narrated by Felipe Mayviewstein. A cool wind blew across the city. Above, gathered as vast legions of melancholic gloom, a formation of dark grey clouds swirled heavily in the springtime skies. A loud crash of thunder rumbled in the distance. Fuck, it'll be storming soon. Melanie whispered anxiously to herself. It was just after three o'clock in the afternoon. Melanie walked along State Street in downtown Chicago. There were many places where she could go to take refuge from the coming storm. But after walking for what seemed to be a very long while, Melanie finally arrived at West Van Buren Street and State Street, where she found herself before her favourite place in the whole of town. The Harold Washington Public Library. The library would be open until nine o'clock in the evening, meaning that she would have some time to evade the storm. Hoping that the storm would be over by nine o'clock, Melanie decided to go into the library. After all, it was free, and she could find herself a good book to read in the meantime. Melanie entered the library, and at once felt somewhere deep within her soul a sense of happiness of belonging. Something about the library, about all of those books, made her feel amazing. Walking slowly through the grand lobby of the main floor of the library, Melanie approached the ascending escalator which led towards the third floor. The escalator right up toward the third floor was uplifting. Knowing that in only a short little while she would be in the presence of books upon books upon books, Melanie felt herself simply overjoyed. What will I read today? Melanie whispered quietly to herself as she ascended the elevator towards the sixth floor. Outside, the storm violently commenced. Thunder roared unyieldingly. Melanie had made it to shelter in the library, just in time. Exhausted from her long walk, Melanie decided to sit down at one of the study tables for a short break. From outside, the constant roar of thunder could be clearly heard. It was as if it were the storm of the century which now tormented the city outside. Melanie could feel her eyelids grow increasingly heavy. Don't fall asleep, she angrily whispered to herself. Don't fall asleep. As Melanie was beginning to doze off into sleep, she noticed, seated at a table not far from hers, an old man wearing a long brown trench coat and a black beret. Around his neck he wore a red and black tartan patterned scarf of evident high quality. He appeared to be taking notes. The man then looked up from his notebook and stared directly at Melanie. Melanie, 
noticing this, suddenly lost her drowsiness. Something about the man staring unblinkingly at her made her feel very uneasy. So she stood up and decided to go lose herself somewhere in one of the many aisles of bookshelves in the library. As she stood up, Melanie noticed the old man also stood up, all the while his gaze directly upon her. Melanie felt her uneasiness grow. She decided to get on the escalator upwards. Perhaps she could get away from this man by going to another floor. Nope. The man was evidently following her. As she ascended towards the seventh floor, and eventually the eighth floor, Melanie realised that this man was obviously following her. Leave me alone, Melanie shouted towards the man. I will call security. Melanie, you cannot escape from me, replied the old man in a calm voice. Melanie felt her heart suddenly stop. How do you know my name? she asked. Is Melanie really your name? replied the old man. Melanie felt very unusual. Who are you? she then asked. My name is Animus, replied the old man. As Animus spoke those words, he reached into his coat pocket and from there retrieved a long red and black serpent. The serpent hissed. Melanie felt a great terror suddenly occupy her soul. She turned and raced towards a uniformed security guard nearby. But as she drew nearer to the security guard, she noticed that it was no security guard. No, it was a baboon wearing a rubber Jesus Christ mask. The sight of this masked baboon utterly tormented Melanie. Promptly she turned towards the escalator, hoping to descend and exit the building. But, however, the old man stood at the entrance of the downward escalator. Realising there was no place to run to, Melanie bolted towards the many rows of bookshelves, hoping she might find somewhere to hide in the aisles. But as she drew closer to the bookshelves, she realised that the bookshelves were not bookshelves. No, they were palm trees, endless rows of palm trees. Looking around, Melanie noticed that she was no longer in the library. She was on some tropical island. The sky above was not dark nor thunderous. No, it was instead a calm and peaceful orange-coloured sunset sky. Fortunately, both the mysterious man and the masked baboon appeared to be gone as well. Under the beach of this island, a series of calm waves continuously splashed. Melanie looked around in disbelief. Where am I? she wondered to herself. Then, as the waves gently splashing on the beach calmly ebbed away, 
Melanie noticed something rather curious on the beach. It was what appeared to be the body of a human being, probably dead. Slowly, Melanie approached the body, lying motionlessly on the beach. As she drew nearer, she could hear a beautiful melody being sung by what can only be described as angels. The melody was so enchanting, in fact, that Melanie could feel herself growing more and more calm, more and more relaxed. Finally, after what felt like a very long while, Melanie finally reached the body lying on the beach. It was the body of a woman. The woman was completely naked, except for a mask which covered her head. The same rubber Jesus Christ mask worn by the baboon in the library. This sight made Melanie feel very uneasy. As she knelt besides the motionless body of the masked woman, Melanie noticed the man with the brown trench coat reappear in the distance. This time he held a bleeding heart in his right hand and a rose in his left. Melanie, upon seeing the man again, promptly arose and made an attempt to flee. But, however, as she tried to run, she noticed that coiled tightly around her ankles, that red and black serpent firmly gripped her in place. She was trapped. Slowly, the serpent wound and wound up Melanie's body, until eventually it wrapped itself tightly around her neck. Melanie could feel herself now being violently asphyxiated. As she struggled to breathe, the man slowly approached her, and finally, kneeling beside the nearby naked body of the masked woman, the bleeding heart in his right hand he consumed in one gulp. Then, the rose in his left he placed upon the chest of the naked, masked woman lying on the beach. Finally, as the sun descended beyond the horizon, the man lifted the Christ mask from the woman to unveil her identity. Melanie looked on in horror. Indeed, the woman behind the mask was none other than Melanie herself.